Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is by request uh, from one of my uh, one of my frequent commenters and uh, you know and I'm assuming subscribers, I hope that he is, uh, who wanted me to do a, a brief playthrough of Avalon Hills Luftwaffe and uh, I, I have had to tweak the rules quite a bit. So this is going to be a solo play demo. Uh, just some of the ideas that I came across. Um, I, I won't be able to present the board as perfectly as I would like, but I, I think you'll get a general sense of how it's, uh, how it's supposed to work. And I will begin by you know, going through some of the, the very basic rules for the basic game. So I'm using the counters for the basic game. But like I said, I had to tweak some of this for solo play. So let me get started with um, some of the rules of the game. So basically how to play, um, you know, begins with the, the German player moves first. The German player is going to place his or her, um, his or her air defenses, his or her uh, airplanes on specific locations on the map. So there's a, a wide variety of, uh, of airfields that spread across the entire map. So the, the German player can place uh, airplane counters on um, in the Netherlands, in Germany, uh, in Czechoslovakia, in Poland, uh, even in Hungary, if they wish, uh, and basically just spread them throughout Austria. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any in Yugoslavia. No, there aren't. So Austria, if they choose to. So, And the German player is going to put out these pieces without knowing where the attack is going to come from. All right, so German player places out uh, his or her airplanes on the board. All right, and I can show you that very quickly. So as you can see, I have already laid out my setup here. And you can see uh, this portion of the board I didn't need. So I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to put the aerial combat table here. I'm not using the counters. I'm using a D20. Uh, this, this game is played in a 20 round set or 20 turn sessions. So I'm using a D20 as my session counter. Uh, the D6, you only need one D6 to determine um, the combat results. Uh, and it's the combat results is a cross reference between the player, the plane type, how many factors of that plane you're actually using, and then the number of factors will then determine what counts as a kill when you roll the d6. So for example, if I have uh, four factors of a b17, all right, if I'm bombing something, I only need to roll a four, a five, or a six in order to bomb that target. All right, so four factors of a b17 or a b24 for that matter, has a 50-50 chance of hitting the target. You only have to bomb one target in order for that uh, bombing run to be successful. Then they can turn around and, and return back to their start line. Now there's two start lines for the, uh, for the allies. There's a 1943 start line, which is down over here. And then for bombers only, and for sneak attack only, there are there's a start line here out in the Baltic Sea where they can come in from there. But, you know, I determined that I was going to split the forces up. And again, this is part of solo play um, where I would have basically five. I would have five uh, bombing run, or actually six bombing runs coming on the sneak attack. And that will be in turn three. And the other four coming from, uh, from the 1943 start line, uh, which the 
you know, the other player, the German player would not be aware of what's coming across that sneak attack line. Uh, but again, solar rules, you know, I just had to make it where I could, um, I could randomize it as much as, as possible. Speaking of that randomization, that's going to get me to target selection, right? So this is the, this is the target, the target sheet. They also have this almost unusable, although pretty cool looking map, but it's so tiny. I actually had it upside down for you. It's so tiny. I could barely read it. I'd have to get a magnifying glass in order to, uh, in order to determine what it actually says. But, um, but the target sheet is actually pretty clear. And what you do is you select, you know, the target and then you're going to select the, the group that you have. So, um, I have B24s and B17s in the basic. And so you would just circle the B17 and then which target you're looking for. Now, for solo play, where I says, well, they're going to concentrate in this first round of 20, uh, 20 turns. They're going to concentrate on aircraft factories. So that's going to be their primary first wave of attacks. And there are... There are 19, there are 19 aircraft factories that also have other resources tied to them as well. And those other resources could be arms, ball bearings, chemicals, steel, oil, a rail center, shipping, or transportation. <coughs> so I just rolled a D20 and uh, any, you know, any result of, since there's 19 of them, any result of a 1 or a 20 would be the city of Berlin. And then, you know, all the others were just in their regular numerical order. You know, as I counted them off, that's what they became. So I have also segmented whether they were secret uh, sneak attacks or if they were across the 1943 line. So let me go back to the map so you can see. Now, what I found was that as I was randomizing which bomber group was going to go for which target, I started realizing that um, only these cities up over here were, were most accessible from sneak attack. And so I had to make some adjustments or I moved some units up over there in order to be that. And then I determined that... Um, I only had enough counters to mark off my targets uh, at this point. So if you'll see here, the green counters are the German counters and blue counters are the American counters. But I didn't have an easy way of uh, identifying which were the, the 10 targets that I selected. So I used blank counters to mark off the 10, the circle, are the sneak, the, the sneak attack uh, in that first wave, and then the square are from the 1943 line. So now I can basically see um, where everything is on the board before we even gone into the first round, the first, uh, the first turn, I should say. Um, so let's get back to the game rules here. So the German moves any or all aircraft counters that he wishes. So taking off counts as a move, all right, as, as does landing, all right? So at this time, I have all of my, my planes obviously landed. So they are landed, they're on airstrips, and I'm probably not going to activate them until, and this is a solo play modification, until some enemy aircraft has either crossed over another city location, another target location um, within its vicinity, so within its particular quadrant, then they would scramble and they would take to the air, you know, in that, uh, in that round 
or the following round. That's when they'll start to respond. So again, you know, I, I had to figure out a way of a way of determining, you know, how in solo play you'd have the, you know, the other side, the opposition, you know, react. And so that's basically the idea I came up with was to say, well, any any crossover of a city here in the lower quadrant, I'll go back to here. So once a plane crosses, let's say, uh, Sosterberg here, which is next to Amsterdam, once a plane crosses over, or if a plane actually attacks, you know, a bomber actually goes for Amsterdam, then all of the planes in this quadrant will be alerted and they will take to the air, all right, during their turn, all right. Um, similarly, if, um, now, if a plane doesn't cross over, let's say a plane is following along here, crosses through Belgium and is going for um, Darmstadt, let's say it's going for Darmstadt here, well, it's not actually going to cross any other location until it really gets to Wiesbaden. Once it crosses over Wiesbaden, then um, then uh, Darmstadt would then and only then know. And then the planes in this this particular quadrant would actually activate. You know, at this point, which there are a couple of planes. Uh, here, uh, there's an FW-190 in uh, Mannheim. Uh, there's a ME-109 in Karlsru. Um, so those would be able to activate and then respond to the bombers that are going in that direction. And as you can see, this here target, uh, Mannheim, is one of the targets for one of these um, bomber groups. Oh, I'm screwing this up. And that particular bomber group is this uh, B-24. Now, the reason why I put this B-24 group here in direct line is because planes must travel, the bombers must travel in a direct line to their target, give or take one turn, all right? Because sometimes they're on that they're on the straight line, they're in, like they're in that in-between spot. Uh, so they might have to make one, one shift to the one of the side hexagons and then can move in a straight line. But they, they must move in a very um, deliberate straight line to their target, drop their payload, and then they turn and start heading back. Uh, the point of bombers is to get back across their start line where they had begun. All right. Now, I'll talk a little bit about the counters, and I, I wish I could um, show this to you in a little bit more detail. Um, but but here we have the rules here, and the counters. The counters have the aircraft type. They have the historical unit identification. So um, the aircraft type, I'll, I'll talk about the DFW-190. It has an evaluation rate or an E rating of four. It has a movement factor of seven. So it can move seven, it can move seven spaces in, a, uh, in any direction on its turn. All right, the eval rate of a four is the number of turns that it is going to be in play. All right, so uh, before it has to make a, you know, make a landing, make a return, which basically says that the aircraft, this particular aircraft unit can fly 14, you know, 14 hexes out, return 14 hexes back, all right, and that would be its four turns that it could make. Now, if the Germans have the advantage that they can land at any airfield, all right, and, and basically reset that up again. So they don't have to return to their safe line like the American planes do. 
So that's, you know, that's going to be, you know, kind of a fun thing to see how that works out. Um, some other details of the rules here. So um, as I said, the sneak attack, um, I just chose third round is going to be the sneak attack. There's, there's ways you could have sneak attack five, sneak attack uh, in turn four, um, or eight, or whatever. I just chose three. Let it kind of be simple, very quick for this uh, particular demonstration. So how to move? All right, so in his turn, a player has the option to move some or all of his units on the board. Each unit can move no farther than its movement factor. Each is printed uh, in, the, in the movement, uh, in the movement uh, unit. Example, the movement factor of an F-190 is 7. An F-190 can move no more than 7 squares in one turn. Unused movement cannot be transferred. Uh, bombers must always move its entire 3-point factor, but fighter planes can move less than their movement factor. So that if they have a 7 like the F-190, uh, FW-190, then it can... Um, it can move six if it chooses to, all right, uh, or or even two or three, and then look to return on its its next uh, its next turn. <coughs> Bombers must always move straight to their assigned target. They must travel their full movement factor each turn. Uh, their turn on the target square, even if they have not used their full movement, in that turn. All right, and then we'll take a look at bombing missions. After bombing, bombers must return to their R line they started from, traveling their full movement factor in each turn. Fighters may move less than their full movement factor. All right, uh, fighters may move in any direction or combination of directions each turn. No combat occurs until all movement is completed. No plane can enter Switzerland, all right, uh, which is neutral. The die has no effect on movement. So rolling is just simply a um, is just simply the, the combat um, determinant. <coughs> so let me get to the the booklet is kind of it's like a it's like a multifold, so it's it's a little bit unwieldy. It would have been nice if it was just a book that you could flip through. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you could probably go online and get a book just to flip through. All German planes of the same type must take off at the same time. For example, all ME-109s must take off at the same time. When all planes of one type take off, the a type's aircraft time counter is put on the proper turn number. All right, so this is so you could determine which which planes took off when, and then and then counter their thing. In solo play, you can um, you can kind of fudge this, or you can actually just take detailed notes and 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 put it out that way. So, like I said, there's going to be some tweaks. If you are playing this solo, uh, when all planes of one type take off, the type of aircraft time counter is put on the proper turn number on the uh, on the time record. All planes which carry auxiliary fuel tanks must do so uh, must do so at this time. Um, if ME 109s take off on turn three, the ME 109 time counter is put on turn seven which is four turns in the future. When the ME-109s have held their tanks and the time now counter is moved to turn seven, they must land before the turn ends. Those that do not are eliminated. All right, so if planes do not land when they're supposed to or do not cross over their start line, they are lost. They're assumed to have run out of fuel, and crash landed. Like I said, the, the German planes have the advantage of being able to land at any airfield, uh, so which is a huge, huge advantage. 
Both sides, aircraft time counters with two numbers are used for fires, which carry droppable external fuel tanks. The left number shows how many air turns each type has in its tanks uh, are not dropped early. The right number shows the number of air turns it takes uh, are dropped for example. A P-47 holds his tanks. He has a maximum of 10 turns in the air. Without tanks, he only has three turns in the air. So again, that factor number was how many turns, how many particular movements they would get. Let's move on to um, refueling can occur at bases. Only German planes can refuel, which I mentioned. When several units of the same type land on one base at, a, at the same time, only one full strength unit, two combat factors, or two half strength units can be refueled each turn. <coughs> German units that cannot reach a base and American units that cannot recross the R line before fuel exhaustion must be removed from the board as soon as the situation is discovered. More than one unit per, per square. After the game begins, there is no limit to the number of units that can occupy the same square. So you can stack up those units on the on the hex um you know so you can do that with your you know i do it with the bombers again just for simplicity um so i place the bombers in basically factors of four so um each each counter has a large image that counts as two and then you flip it over uh a smaller image of the same plane that counts as one. So let's say a uh, let's say you have a B-17 counter that has a two factor. All right. So you're looking at the large image. If it takes some uh, anti-aircraft uh, damage, but it only lost one point, you just flip it over. So there's still just one plane left in the sky, and then if it loses that last point, then it's shot down. All right. Um, I like stacking them because then you have four, you know, the the idea of four planes, uh, four bombers in one uh, in one formation, and that's how I send them out to the target again. It's a it's a modification done for solo play. Uh, if you have two live players, you can you know both players are going to decide. Well, I'm going to just send two bombers you know, at this target here instead of four, and I'm going to send out a whole slew of, uh, of bombers and just control them, you know, all, again, they all take off at the same time, like, like typed bombers all take off at the same time, like type fighters all take off at the same time. So there is some simplification done even in uh, the true normal play of the game. Bomber missions. Missions planning is done on the target sheet, which I, I already talked about how I had to make modifications for that. Uh, they go through drawing a line, showing the thing. Uh, the bomber is to attack an air base, draw a line from the bomber unit to the thing that's on the target. I'm not worried about the target sheet. Bombers may leave on their mission at any time during the game, individually or in groups. They must spend their first turn on the board behind the R-line. They must recross the same R-line before the 20th turn ends. Bombing cities. Each bomber counter represents two combat factors when the target aircraft is face up on the counter. Only one combat factor is needed to eliminate a target. Even though each bomber counter is strong enough to destroy two targets, it cannot be sent to attack more than one. So bombers have to be sent out for a very specific target. Only bombers of the same type may mass into larger formations, which is what I described, right? Bombers 
of the same type may fly together in a huge stack. I've already explained that. The most direct course is defined as the route that takes the least number of air turns from departure to target and back to our line, which I've already explained. Small bomber groups may leave the main mass at any time. Bombers must move their full movement factor every turn. I've already explained that. During the turn in which a bomber unit reaches its target, the AA guns of that target fire. Only bomber units that have survived the defending AA fire may bomb. Units that have bombed their target cannot go deeper into Germany. Bomber units must exit from the board through the R line they originally crossed. All industries in the city are destroyed and cannot be rebuilt when one or more bomber units bomb it. Bombing bases. All rules under bombing cities apply here. Additional rules follow. Bomber units that are assigned to attack air bases may attack any air base the American player chooses. Again, I made a modification and randomize that. Since the American player can decide and attack any particular base at any time, the bomber unit does not have to travel the most direct route to a target. It must travel the most direct route when returning to the R line. All right, so slight modification there, but um, I chose air bases that had other industries attached to them, so doesn't quite apply there. There is no limit to the number of bases that can be attacked. All right. When an air base is bombed, all aircraft on it are eliminated and the base is unusable for the rest of that quarter. Bombers do not have to endure, uh, do not have to endure fire from light AA at the base being bombed. But it ha if that base is in the same square as a city, the heavy city guns fire before those bombers attack the base. Bombing a base which is in the same square as a city does not destroy the city, nor does bombardment of the city automatically destroy the base. These are two distinct targets and each must be bombarded separately. Bombers, attack, uh, bombers attacking bases may abort or turn back at any time, but those scheduled to attack cities must pass on, press on regardless of losses. Sneak raids. <coughs> Sneak raids. At the beginning of the game, the American player commits himself with in, inverted counters to number the number of bomber units making a sneak raid. Uh, and the turn number in which they appear. Two turns before sneak raids appear, the German player must be warned to expect a sneak raid. Uh, like a lot of this, again, solo play, um, you know, I'm just forgetting about it. Fighter missions. German units can stage. Staging is the movement of units to locations that are more centralized. At the start of the game, no base can hold more than one unit. The German player will usually want to relocate units from bases far from the R line or on the Baltic squares to bases more centrally located. Therefore, the German player stages, that is, he moves his units after the game begins so that two or more units are sitting on one base. So at the beginning, they have to be all spread out. All right. And then as the, as the turns begin happening, then the, uh, the German player can begin to consolidate. Another modification for solo play. They're starting where they're at. And like I said, that, that whole zone defense, as I described it, uh, once they are notified of an incursion into their their zone, then they can begin to respond. Uh, immediately taking off that round, and then in the following round, moving their uh, their movement rates. 
uh, in whatever direction uh, I would choose them to go, which would make the most sense, all right? Fighter sorties, American uh, sorties, American fighters may fly only in once in a game. German fighters may fly as many times in the game as refueling permits. Although all planes of the same type must take off at the same time if German or placed behind the R line at the same time if American, they may operate independently and may land or recross the line individually any time before fuel exhaustion. German units that land earlier then the others of their type cannot take off until all planes of the same type have been refueled. Oh, let me pause this for a second. Okay, and I'm back. Uh, you probably see like a little skip. There was a pretty long delay uh, that I had, but uh, without further ado, let us get to, um, well, wind condition really quick. So in order for the Allies to win, they must hit 12 of their, uh, 12 of their intended targets. In other words, destroying 12 of their targets, uh, and that secures the win. If, um, if they don't, you know, obviously hit their 12 targets, then the Germans win. So that might not sound like it's very much, but again, every, you know, every uh, city that they fly over, they're going to face uh, both uh, the heavy, you know, heavy aircraft, anti-aircraft fire, anti fire uh, which could potentially take them down. And then of course there is the, the plane responses, uh, the, the German defenders, their, um, their fighter plane responses as well, which can scramble and then, you know, uh, go at them, you know, right from the get-go. So, again, remember, I had to make some rule modifications uh, for solo play. And we'll see, this is the first test that you're seeing. Actually, it's a very unscripted and unchained uh, solo play here. I, I haven't tested out exactly how this will work out and how it will display to you. I'm hoping it does a good enough job of uh, displaying it well. So here we go. And let me just shift my table a little bit. Somehow that got shifted and you probably didn't see any notification. Let's see that we're working. Yes. All right. So, taking a look here. So, as I mentioned, this is the sneak attack. This is going to be in turn three. Two turns prior to the sneak attack, the German side would become aware of that. All right. So, these planes in this quadrant are going to take off because they know about the sneak attack at least two turns ahead. So they will actually be in the air. Once those planes start crossing these, these other cities, they will, um, they'll be subject to anti-aircraft carry uh, fire, especially from cities. All right, but even across the airfields alone, so any airfield that is adjacent to a city uh, is also protected by that heavy city anti-aircraft fire, which, um, which has a, a better chance of, uh, of hitting um, the planes. So here we go. I am going to have the Americans launch so i am going to take a look at uh, my targets that are non um, the non-sneak attack targets so i have a target from uh for manaheim 
So this is the first target that I'm going to look for. Let me find Manaheim. It's going to be a square here. So this target here, and remember the planes have to follow a, a straight line. So this grouping of B24s, I am going to move there. My first, it's two, it's a four factor. So there's a total of four planes or four bomber groups in this grouping here, and they're going to move one, two, three. So they are double stacked and they have moved three. So they're going to make a, a direct line. They haven't come across any others. So the next, uh, and this is round one. So I'm, I'm on one here for my counter. So the next non sneak attack I have is going for Kessel and Kessel is here. This is going to be this B-17 fighter group and they are going to come here and then here. They have not crossed over any, you know, any uh, plane just yet um, or airfield just yet. It'll be on the next round that these others will become aware of them, particularly those in Amsterdam. My next non is going to go for Munich and Munich is uh, another square is way out over here. Now this one, like I said, is going to have to do like a little zigzag. All right. Uh, because there isn't a direct flight path to here. So one of these is going to have to wait until they get in line. So he's going to move across Belgium and he is going to come the most direct route. He is going to get to here. He's going to cross Belgium and enter. So that's a B-17 grouping. Um, non-sneak attack, non-sneak attack, non-sneak attack. So, and there's supposed to be one more non-sneak attack. Um, Kessel, I did. Oh, this one. So this B-17 group is going to move three spots to here. So that's the first American round. All right. Um, if I weren't going to send separate fighter escorts along with them. Now, these fighters know where their intended target is going to be. And as I said, um, as the rule stated, fighters can't be stacked until after they've entered the board. So I'm going to move this fighter group here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And I'm going to move this one to just six. I'm going to separate them so that they can get ready. They're going to be ready to engage anything that this bomber encounters um, or activates once they, they come along. All right, so now I'm down here. I think you could see at this point here, none of this is activated yet. They're still unaware. And these planes now are airborne. So, the 109 is airborne here. It is, it is three rounds. This one is airborne here. This airborne here. So I know that those in that quadrant are airborne. Hasn't crossed yet, but for two rounds, they know that they are airborne. So that's how I will designate it. Those are airborne.
round two. And let's find a two on my D20. So I'm going to move the bombers once again. This bomber making its direct path is now over tier. All right, and again, once that happens, now all of the planes in this quadrant are going to um, are going to get a message. All right, that there is a bombing run or bombers in the air. And so every plane in this quadrant is going to then take off. The next, this B-17 is going to cross over Icon and go next to, so it is now next to Bon. Now, Bon has anti-aircraft, all right? So large city, large cities get to attack. So city AA on a die roll of a six, it can deplete one of those down. Rolled a one, so they are fine. This bomber group is going to move and it is actually literally over the city of Bonn. And rolled a five, so unharmed at that point. So those have moved so far. He is going to move three. So the B-17 has moved three here. Crossed over. Dilan. And now all of these planes are airborne. So every plane in this quadrant is now airborne. And they are, now these planes were airborne last round. Um, and so now they can start uh, moving. And I am going to have, because they don't know exactly where, um, I am going to have them actually stay patrolling right there. Because the others haven't even taken the field yet and they will be able to respond once that happens. So that is the end of round two. Round three. Sneak attack is going to begin, but I'm going to move these planes down here first. That way I can kind of separate the, uh, the two in, in my own mind, keeping track of this. So this group of B, this B24 group is now going to move one, two, three. It is now outside of Mannheim. Mannheim had planes on it. And so now they are going to take off as well as these planes here. So now they have two planes in the air, um, at least two plane units in the air. And this whole quadrant has now been placed on alert. So now they're all airborne. The bombers are adjacent to the city. And so they are going to be subject to an attack and a six. So here I just rolled a six. So City AA does, does one, one damage on a roll of a six. So that's been depleted now down to three units. 
All right, so that'll be interesting to see. So they just went from a four where they would have damaged their target on a four, five, or six. They're now a three. So only a five or six will mean that their bombing run will have an effect. All right. I'm going to move this to one, two, three. And then this group is going to, it's going to take him a while to get to Munich. So he is going to go one, two, three. He's going to come here. Eventually he is going to break off and start heading directly towards Munich. This here is going to move one, two, three. Is he next to a city? He is not, he is not. Okay. So this B-17 group here, uh, this, I'm sorry, this B-24 group here is actually just targeting Gidnia, which is both an airfield and a city. And it's right across the border. So this is going to be the first attempted bombing run. All right. And this is on the sneak attack round. So there, the city AA has just a six out of, you know, only a six depletes. It did not. And then the base AA will score a kill on a five or a six, and it did not. So now the four planes that are there are going to make an attack. So they have a power of four, they're B-24s. So they will hit their target on a four, five, or six. It's a two. So it was ineffective. All right, so they, they missed their target, so did not, was not successful. That means that they're going to have to go back across the line again and then make another attempt, or a different squadron will have to go back. So that's a, that's a fail on their part already. The next coming in line is going to cross over three. This here is going to cross over three. This one was for Munster. It's going to come one, two, three. So it's right next to Hamburg. Hamburg is going to get an attack and then this one One of them was for, for way out there. So he is going to come. Actually, I'll have a different starting location for him. So he is going to go one, two, three. And then he is going to come down. A sneak attack for Munster here. One, two, three. Okay, so as you can see now, we've had one bombing run on ineffective. We have some scrambled fighters already in the mix, and they are going to come at their closest targets. So this first group of FW-190s, so it's a, a grouping of four, is going to go after these B-24s here. So they are going to engage these B-24s here. 
There's three B24s. Two FW190s um, is going to is going to factor. Where are my FW190? Oh, here we are. So 190s. Two of them are going to kill one plane on a four, five, or six, and they destroyed one of these. This Messerschmitt 109s, they're going to engage as well. ME 109s, it is a grouping of two, so they destroy on a four, five, or six. They rolled a four, so now this B24 is just down to one unit already. This JU-88 is going to engage these two B-17s. A JU-88 only on a um, only a five or a six. A three does nothing. All right, going over here. Oh, by the way, this 109 scrambled last turn. So this 109 is going after these two B-17s. Scored a four. So 109 on a 4, destroyed 1 B-17. This 109 is coming in. He scored a 6. He destroyed a B-17. I forgot to move that one. Uh, let's see. This JU-88 is going to go after this solo B-17. Score to 5. He reduced it down to 1. This 109 is going to engage this group of B-24s. A six reduced it down to three units now. This one ten can move one, two, three, four, and attack them. So ME one ten, it is two units. It scores on a four, five, or six, a five. Destroyed one of those planes. This pair of 110s is going to come on the four B-24s. Two ineffective. This 109 on the B-24s. Six depleted it by one. 110 on those two B24s, a two ineffective. Berlin is a target, I gotta remember. So these 109s, um, in this quadrant, because that only crossed over, um, in, in this particular quadrant, actually they would have been in the air 
with that attack last round, but they probably just took to the air now. Um, so I will do it. I think one way you could do this is go by quadrant by quadrant and just resolve all the goings on in those various quadrants. This guy was supposed to move towards, um, he was going towards Munster, so he would have crossed here. And he was already airborne, so that 110 is going to attack that one. A three will not impede him. So now it is round four. So let's deal with this quadrant first. This B-17 is going to go one, two, three, heading towards its target here. So it is next to Schweinfurt. Schweinfurt's anti-aircraft guns does not take it out. This actual single bomber now is going to be over Man Mannheim. So... It's anti-aircraft, which has two different types now. It's got city and air base. City AA, no effect. The air base AA, a four, no effect. The bombing run itself, so the B-24, it is now only a single unit. So it's only going to hit on a, on a six. Ooh, five, just missed. These B-17s here will now reach their target of... Um, Schweinfurt. Schweinfurt's City AA, four missed. It's base AA, five, reduced it by one. And they are going to drop their payload. Their payload. So now they are a factor of three, three B-17s, and they are going to hit on a five or a six, a three. So they missed their target. So Schweinfurt. This lone B-17 is going to go one, two, three. He is next to the city of Kessel. Kessel is going to fire. It is city, not base, so missed him. This B-17 is going to move one, two, three. Let's start resolving German plane action here. So German planes are going to move in on, so this ME-109 is going to come onto these three B-17s. Roll to one, did not harm it. This 110 is going to come down to engage this B-17. A three. Oh, it's a unit of two, so destroyed one plane. This 109 down here is going to go after 
That B24, he missed. The 190, he destroyed that plane. So, the Mannheim was not bombed. So, so far, <coughs> what we've had, and I'm going to start shorten this down, you know, a little bit. You could start to see that um, the movement of pieces, and you could see how somewhat difficult it is for, um, you know, for solo play as far as keeping track of everything. And I have to keep on working on various models of it. Um, I could change the, the parameters of, you know, the number of planes that are going to be on the board at any given time. I could change the, um, I could change the number of targets that are needed in order for there to be a success. But, um, but I think you could start to see the real advantage that there is here for the, um, for the Germans obviously doing a defensive action. Now I have a ton more airplanes here. Um, these are all fighter planes that I could have unleashed and let them start spreading out onto the board and start engaging these other fighters. Um, you know, I had only moved a few once they've activated. And so I still have a total stack here of, you know, probably about 12 fighter planes ready to, you know, sling out there and start going after and picking off any of these, um, you know, any of the German fighter planes that are out there. So you could start to see how complex this is. And again, I mean, just to give you a good, a good look, I'm just going to shift over because I'm, I'm not going to continue running this scenario. Um, it'll probably take me hours upon hours of um, sorting this out and, and doing everything. Um, you know, another organizational thing that I could do is I could just deal with one quadrant at a time and just run through the entire, you know, the entire scenario and let that quadrant um, be done. I could limit it down to just one country. So we're just going to deal with the targets that are in Germany and deal with that. You could progressively go like we're going to start with the Netherlands first, you know, and then, you know, uh, Germany next or, or maybe up here in Poland and start working from Poland on down and then focus on and then take all of these other targets that we were talking about, actually this whole other board here and just remove that and say, well, we're not going to deal with that. You could start at different timelines. So you could add the 1945 line where now the Americans can start anywhere over here, plus on this side as well and start coming in from both directions. So that would be um, really expanding the, uh, the board a lot more, uh, by doing that and making it, uh, much more engaging, much more, um, much more dynamic of theater of battle, if you're including all of that as well. So I am going to switch views here, uh, once I get back on and come back on, <coughs> excuse me. Come back over to here. So, um, you know, I, I hope you were able to, to gain some, you know, some insight into, you know, how the game system works. It's it's really not that complicated once you start organizing uh, some of the things. I think the um, I think that the time tracker that comes in the in the box set is helpful. Although you might want to, um, if you're doing this solo play, definitely. You're going to want to make up your own kind of a spreadsheet layout where you can then jot down the various units and what turn they launched on and what their target was and, and so on. I mean, I just wrote it on a little, you know, scrap piece of paper here. We're going for these 10 targets. Plus I had an auxiliary in case those 10 didn't work. If any got back uh, across the red line, then that would become the current, um, the current battle group that I'd have 
to go into the next potential scenario, maybe pick a different type of target. So now they're gonna go after oil assets and just have that target list to use for the second round of 20. But uh, in, that, in that combat, so the American forces had lost a total of, let's see, uh, two B-24s, uh, four B-24s, six, six B-24s, and four B-17s uh, during that. Uh, they made three bombing runs, all of them unsuccessful at their target, uh, basically going after a maximum of 12 targets, with, which is what I was doing. They already lost the scenario at that point. Now, I could have, of course, separated those bomber groups into just groupings of two and have a lot more pieces going out there, a lot more targets they were going for. But again, for simplicity and for demonstration, I, I put them into what I thought would be uh, a, a much greater advantage by putting them in groupings of four um, because the, the, the calculation for four as opposed to two, just to give you an example, a B-17 group, which is three planes, scores a hit on a five or a six. On four plane, with four planes, it scores a hit on a four, five, or six. <clears throat> if I go beyond that, and I go all the way up to, let's say, eight, if I really stacked it up, it would do one point of damage um, on a two. It would produce two kills on a three, um, three on a four, four on a five, and, and five on a six. And those multiple kills could be um, both city and, uh, and facilities. So that's how, where you need two kills uh, to get from. Uh, <clears throat> they can also counteract uh, fighters attacking them. Certain planes can, um, can counteract against, um, you know, certain bombers can counteract, especially like B-17s and, and B-24s. They do have air-to-air uh, -air capability where they can shoot down enemy uh, fighter planes as well. So um, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I, I know it's a, it's a little bit, you know, uh, difficult, I think, to really uh, get the full scope of the game just by watching, you know, a very brief demonstration. But uh, if you have the rules, and if you don't have the rules for your, uh, for your setup, uh, I'm pretty sure that you could probably go online and just find a rule book. You'll probably find it easier to print this out uh, in a different format than this particular format. And the, you know, the resolution chart is, is a very, very simple resolution chart. And you're only do using really one die for the entire gameplay. So if you're playing with two players, you each only need one D6 to to uh, the combat re resolution and see how it turns out. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, as always, I, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. If, uh, if you have any more questions or comments about Avalon Hill and uh, Luftwaffe, or any of their other games that I that I also have that you want me to go through, it's, it's a nice change of pace. Uh, not just doing uh, tabletop role playing games, but you know any any kind of tabletop games uh, goes really back for me. Goes back to I remember playing this game back when I was in my uh, you know early to mid teens, back in the early eighties. Um, and it's a quite old game, actually. I think this one was like 1971. Yeah, this is a 1971 game. So this has been around for a long, long time. The other thing I'm really excited about is the fact that when I went on YouTube to look for anything about this game, my channel is the only one that's actually covering Avalon Hill's Luftwaffe. So that I was kind of shocked that I couldn't find anybody else with any videos on this. So... Um, but if you can find one and you're aware of one, that I would love to see how someone else is, is running this and playing this uh, to see what, what I might have made mistakes on uh, just reading through it. Um, 
You know, my, my 55 year old brain isn't what my 15 year old brain was. I was actually a lot sharper <laughs> back then than I am now. So uh, if I missed anything, please feel free to, you know, point out, hey, you did this a little differently. Just remember, I did modify for solo play um, that I wouldn't have had to have done uh, following the, the general game rules uh, for, you know, two player you know, or multiple player games, uh, because you could you could add more than just two players to this by having one one could play all the B-17s, another can just operate all the B-24s, another player can play just the you know just the fighter, uh, and and you could have you know probably three four players playing this game uh, simultaneously, just taking different roles uh, on on either or both sides as well. So. Again, thanks for joining. Hope you like this. Have a great day.